Welcome back to another edition of Our City. And as we move into the month of February here in the city of Elizabeth, on Wednesday, January 29th at 5.30 in the evening, I'm going to attend the Greater Elizabeth Chamber of Commerce. They're going to have a multi-chamber networking event. It is held at Galloping Hill Caterers and Union. For more information, please call the chamber at 908-355-7600. This is where different chambers of commerce come together and meet and share information. On Monday, February 3rd at 5 o'clock in the evening, I'm going to join Councilwoman at Large Patricia Perkins Augusti and Elizabeth residents for a proclamation signing. This program will be held in city council chambers, and it's an honor and kicking off African American History Month. For more information or to register for this event, you can call Grace in the city clerk's office at 908-820-4130. If you need any more information concerning these events, or any other events, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. And for this week's show, I'm pleased to be joined by Councilwoman at Large, Patricia Perkins Augusti, in talking about African American History Month during the month of February here in the city of Elizabeth and the opportunities and the plans that are to be had throughout our city. Councilwoman, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. Good to see you again. You haven't been out in a while, at least not with me, maybe I, with Alonzo. I know, that's correct. Good to be back. Yeah, good mm -hmm, to be back. Mm -hmm. So, Councilwoman, tell us about 20-some-odd years in the city council. Tell us about that. Yeah, about 20-some-odd, about 20-some, <laughs> <laughs> about 28 years, and it, it's been all been fun. Um, exciting, adventurous, um, meeting new residents, seeing how the city is transforming itself um, under your leadership, which is great. Um, it's, it's just good to be, you know, in service of people. So congratulations on receiving the one out of five 2019 mm -hmm. Outstanding Woman in Government Award. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that award. And I mm -hmm. think it was given to you in November, correct? Yes, that is correct. Tell us about that. I'm totally surprised and um, humbled from, for the state of New Jersey government, what, Women in Municipal Government Award. And um, it was just... Something that I really didn't expect. You know, you just do this every day, and then they say, hey, you need to be recognized because of your leadership, um, your consistency in terms of advocating for the people, and just for just, you know. So it was here. given to you in the League of Municipalities, yes. correct? Yes. It was at a um, early evening event. Yes, it was. A, a reception. A reception. Yes. Mm -hmm. Were there other women honored? Uh, yes. Uh, my good friend, um, Mayor De uh, Wilda Diaz from Firth Amboy. Who, Before she was a mayor, she used to be a banker here yes, in Elizabeth. Yes, yes, yes. We know her very well. Yeah. So, And so I was really happy to be honored with her. And there were a couple other women that were honored, but that one sticks out to me. Good. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations Thank on you. that. Award. So African American History Month is, mm -hmm. as we know, always in February. Yes. And this year they get an extra day. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I always joke about it. It's just, you know, and now it's 29 days yes, in February. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you've always been instrumental mm -hmm. in... Uh, driving not only educational activities, mm -hmm. but informational mm -hmm. issues here during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about uh, what February means and what mm -hmm. you're planning. Well, February, um, it, you stated, is um, Af Black History Month, African American Which History originally Month. originally started as Black History Month, right? Well, and then it changed. Is that how that, is that, did that well, happen? Yeah, it originally started as one week. Right, as one week. Right, Black History Month, week. Right. And then it went to a month in 1976, um, really under um, President Ford. He officially made it a month-long um, holiday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Month-long education e Educational, yeah, observance. Yeah. Um, we have enough holidays in this Yeah, country. no, not a holiday, but <laughs> it would be nice if we took the well, whole month nice, off, yeah. yes. But, um, yeah, it was um, President Ford who actually made it a... Um, a month-long celebration, um, observance, just wanted to recognize, he felt that um, African Americans or their contributions to America were not fully recognized, and so he pushed it to a whole month. Well, it never was. I mean, right. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a kid who went to the school system, so you, know. you mm -hmm. really didn't learn about no. contributions of African Americans no. to our economic society or our okay. political society mm -hmm. or even our our armed services society right, it just right. didn't happen right didn't. and it's getting there but it's not there yet yeah it's getting there but it's not there yet that's so why, why they pick february do you have any idea well yes two reasons um but it's cold no no i'm only kidding <laughs> two reasons um carter g woodson was the founder of um 
Black History Week, the first week, or the Negro Week. That's what it was called back in 1926. Oh, so it was a long time ago. Yeah, 1926. It was called Negro Week. Yeah, 1926, he um, started it. Carter Jewinson was, was a historian and an educator. Um, he graduated from Harvard University. He was one generation out of slavery, meaning that his mother and father were slaves. And he was born in 1875. So when he started to matriculate into schools, college, he found, um, as a historian, he felt that there wasn't enough history told on um, blacks in America in terms of their contribution. So that's why he started it back in 1926. And then 50 years later, as, we, as I stated, um, President Ford made it a month-long celebration. So, so was Negro Week when he started in 26? Mm -hmm. Was that also in February? Yes, he did. it started in February because of Lincoln, because African Americans at that time felt that Lincoln had a direct correlation with freeing the slaves because of the Emancipation Proclamation. And also around February 14th, I think that's the birthday that they give for Booker T. Washington. You know, okay. so it's not really his birthday, but I think that's how they celebrate Booker T. Washington sometime in February. His birthday's probably been lost to history, yeah, the, right? Yeah, it's been yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, so, as a young, as a young girl growing mm -hmm. up in this in the city, uh, did you learn about African American History Month? Was it something that was always discussed in your house, or was it something you had to learn at in school? How did you become aware of African American History Month as a young person? Basically at home and also in the church. Um, going to Shiloh Baptist Church here in the city of Elizabeth, you know, we had a lot of um, cultural events along with the spiritual events. And around the month of February, we did African American History Month. So there was moments in black history where we would, you know, read things, read poems or, you know, recite um, historical people, not only just Martin Luther King, but others like Carter G. Woodson and so many others. So it was an educational experience. It was an definitely, uh, especially mm -hmm. in your house, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, so we're we're going to have a an event on mm -hmm. February third, yes. which you started how many years ago? Twenty seven. Twenty seven years yes. ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every first Monday, right? Mm -hmm. I think we missed one because of a snowstorm. Yeah, Other than that, we've always had it on the first mm -hmm. Monday, right? right. Um, we're going to take a couple of commercials and come back and talk okay. about that event. Okay, great. Please stay with us after these messages. I'll be back more with Councilman at Large Patricia Perkins Augustry talking about African American History Month here in our city. We're an American original, dependable, historic, nuanced, with all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed, a place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started.
Just minutes from New York City. We are the gateway to the state of New Jersey. Experience Elizabeth. It all starts here. Minutes from New York City. We are the gateway to the state of New Jersey. Experience Elizabeth. It all starts here. Hi, my name is Daniel Lencinas. I am the delegate of the International Academy of Science, Technology, Education and Humanity from Valencia, Spain, here in the United States of America and the next president of the 40th World Congress of Poets that will be held here in New Jersey and New York in October 2020. I am pretty, pretty sure that you will enjoy this city, this exciting city, full of possibility, of imagination for your next poems. Hello, I am Mayor Chris Bolwage, and on behalf of the residents of Elizabeth, we are honored to be your next host for the 40th World Congress of Poets. Believing strongly in the arts and being one of the most internationally diverse cities in New Jersey, we are the perfect location for your next inspiration. We are working hard in Elizabeth to deliver our visiting delegates an extraordinary 2020 conference experience. So say the date and join us in Elizabeth, New Jersey. It all starts here. Bem-vindos. Bem-vindos. Ahlan Vic. Bem-vindos. Welcome to Union County College, right here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Welcome to Union County College on behalf of Dr. Margaret McManaman, our college president, and myself, Dean Dr. Rapolo of the Elizabeth campus. We would like to welcome you to this beautiful campus, this beautiful college in this beautiful city, in the city of Elizabeth in New Jersey. We will have the privilege to host the 40th World Poetry Congress, and we're happy to call you, our friends and family, and through poetry and literature, not only exhibit the richness of language and culture and diversity. In today's world, Union County College is dedicated to build bridges among cultures, communities, and identities. As the Tourism Director for Elizabeth, New Jersey, I am honored to invite you to save the date for next October and join the 40th Congress of Poets as they explore all that Elizabeth has to offer. As a transportation hub for the East Coast, Elizabeth is accessible by land, sea, rail, and air. Our city, just minutes from the Big Apple, also contains Terminal A of Newark International Airport. So be sure to plan on staying a few extra days 
to discover all that New York and New Jersey has to offer. As essential hub for travelers, Elizabeth has become home to over 50 different cultural groups, which gives us a unique sense of community. Walking through our different districts, you will be able to see, feel, and smell the sense of culture through our shops and restaurants that you come across. It has been said that in Elizabeth, you can travel the globe without a passport. Our city was also named one of top shopping destinations in America. So here you'll be able to enjoy tax-free shopping on clothes and shoes in one of New Jersey's largest indoor outlet malls, the Mills at Jersey Gardens. Our historical roots can give you an opportunity to explore the foundings of America and the pivotal points of the American Revolutionary War that happened here. Elizabeth was home to founding fathers such as Alexander Hamilton and governors, along with many other influential members throughout history. Elizabeth is one of history's best kept secrets. Mahaba. Paligaya ang pagdating. Ame tamari intazari, tame anya aujo ne ame bo kush avana cheke tame anya avana cho. Just minutes from New York City, we are the gateway to the state of New Jersey. Experience Elizabeth. It all starts here. Welcome back to our city where I'm joined by Councilman at Large Patricia Perkins Augusti talking about African American History Month during the month of February here in our city. Now the event that you start mm -hmm. on the first Monday of February, mm -hmm. uh, we do a proclamation yes. flag. Tell us about the event. Well, first of all, first of all I got to thank you for even joining and not only joining in but participating um, in the events and understanding the need that we are in a city with a lot of cultures and you celebrate them. You allow the citizens to celebrate who they are. So I just want to put a plug in there. Thank, and because you're the, you're the proclamationer. I can proclaim, you proclaim. So I thank you for that also. Um, it's very important um, for new generations when they come, even people who migrate into our community. They need to know who's here, you know, what cultures we celebrate, and just join into, in, into the history of seeing that everyone participates in um, America, everyone participates in your society. And I think that's what African American History Month was trying to um, tell people, that there's great history with people of African descent who really did some good things in, in not only Elizabeth, but in America. Um, it's celebrated in the United Kingdom, it's celebrated in Canada. So other countries also celebrate the vast work that African Americans have done, you know, in their respective You know, it's interesting countries. you say that because I always mm -hmm. tell the story that when I was a boy growing up mm -hmm. and going to school, the only thing we ever learned in the mm -hmm. African American community was Crispus Attucks. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, was the first person that died in, in the Revolutionary yes, War. Yes. And uh, so other than that, mm -hmm. we had no clue right. mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. on any African American mm -hmm. contributions. Mm -hmm. And then when you become an adult and you have mm -hmm. programs like this, right. you learn an awful lot, a lot. about mm -hmm. you know the first surgery that was done, yep. the first mm -hmm. heart, you know. So, it's it's really interesting, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's a great testament yeah. to your leadership Thank you. that mm -hmm. you educate people mm -hmm. uh, about contributions, yeah. not only nationally, but mm -hmm. we have local. many local mm -hmm. uh, people. If you look at Steve Sampson mm -hmm. and his efforts to desegregate the labor unions mm -hmm. when they were building the courthouse building right. back in the 60s. Uh, Steve's a blessed memory, but mm -hmm. his efforts were monumental in this area. That's uh, right. mm -hmm. So what does it mean for the city to celebrate, especially among all the different cultures, well, it's, it, it's, especially in our yeah, city? We yeah. so many different cultures. It, it's important. Um, it, it enhances our city. I think when you learn of each other's culture, it enhances the city. Um, it gives great respect to the people who are already here in terms of, because there are a lot of negative, negative connotations throughout the world about people of color. And I think once we um, elevate people's educational um, you know, environment and say, oh no, look, this is what we do. This is what we invented. This is how we did this. And then you, know, you can take a second look. 
You know, so what it dispels issue, a lot of the myths. It does. What issues do you what issues do you feel resonate with residents this year? It, but this year, oh, so many. So many, I know. <laughs> no. Pick a couple. I know, like parking, no. Yeah. <laughs> parking is a premium. <laughs> no, I think most people, they, they want um, jobs is always important. Housing, we can talk about housing. Yeah, last week's guest was uh, Linda Flores-Tober from the mm. Coalition to House the Homeless, and housing is always an important it's issue. All, it's very important. It's, people want to have a safe place to live, um, send their children to school, um, free public education that is quality is very important. Um, I hear that a lot. And the quality of life. People want to live a quality of life that is decent, affordable, and um, they want their streets to be safe. A police department, they want our police to um, serve and protect. You know, we want to get back to that serving and protecting um, the community. So all of those things still resonate when we, basically when we first took office. It's, you know, so it, it, yeah. tell, tell us about the event on February 3rd again. Uh, what's the structure of it? Do we... We start outside. Well, we start outside, um, flag raising really quick, and then we come inside for the um, proclamation signing, um, re reading, excuse me, by you and signing. There's, there's always a guest um, speaker. Um, I'm still firming that up, so I don't want to say who it's going to be. There'll be music, um, dance, and also art display, and then, of course, a good ethnic food. So some of the kids that performed mm -hmm. in past mm -hmm. years did an absolutely miraculous mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Some of the church choirs or the yeah. dancers who performed in some of the mm -hmm. churches throughout our community, mm -hmm. they always are fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And some of the guest speakers in the past, uh, talk about some of them. You've had some interesting oh God, speakers. We had so many speakers I can go back. Well, you had the state assemblyman from Georgia who grew up here. Yes, yes, that, uh, was, that was very nice. He came uh, up. Um, yeah, so many people. Um, Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell was right. one. Yeah, um, he's he was a great speaker. You know, he you know born and raised here, right here on South Park Street, that Court Street area. Um, and he's an assemblyman who represents the area yeah, of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yeah, Stone Mountain, Georgia, which from was Stone, mm -hmm. part of Martin Luther King's famous speech. It was, and so he's so proud about that. You know, <laughs> um, so many speakers, Mayor. Are you serious? I know. I just, it just uh, lacks so many. Um, so so this year, um, in previous years. Mm -hmm. You talked about the artists showcasing art or performing. Mm -hmm. w have you lined them up yet? Well, it's usually um, Haitian art. I, I always incorporate um, the Haitian American community in the events. Um, there'll probably be a, a Haitian student again who'll do the um, Negro National Anthem. Uh, Haitian art would be on display. Also, um, Derek Dent. Um, you may know his name. He's from Broadway. He does, yeah. a, mm -hmm. he does a, a, an event at the library as yes. well whenever they have an art show. Yes, his art is I like huge. him. Good yeah, guy. Very, very good guy. I, yeah. I think he was from Elizabeth. Originally he, he was, but yes. he's been living in Broadway for many years now. Right, right. So he does, um, his art display is, you know, by far um, very expansive in terms of um, what he does. So his art would be on display. And I love to bring um, children up. Because a lot of times they don't get to see the council chambers. And I remember when we first started this event many years ago, there were grown people who'd never been inside council chambers until that event. And they were like, they were older, you know. And, I, and one of the people said, I've never been in here before. This is amazing. So you just expose people when you open up the council chamber. And you're chamber. the only woman on council. Yes, I'm the You used to be one. one of four, though, or one, one of three. One of three. One of three. One of three. Mm -hmm. And now it's just you. Yes. So they, they treat you nicely, all those men? <laughs> we'll leave that alone, topic. huh? Yes, that's anyway. a different topic. So uh, <laughs> is, it, is the event free? Is it open to it's, the public? It's always free. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in um, having the events free to the public. You, sometimes we have book um, people who have written books from Elizabeth come back, and we give out their books. I mean, we do so many different things um, during the event. It's free. And then, of course, you know, like I said, the food is free. Which you know you like the chicken I know, wings the chicken, and the yeah, collard they, greens. They always had uh, yeah. the collard greens and the chicken. Is that what we're having again this year? Yes, I think I'm going to. Yeah, but the problem is when the speakers go on, I'm out there trying to yes, get it ahead of time. Yeah, you're tasting. Yeah, yes. I'm tasting, yes. right. You know mm -hmm. that. Yes. And sometimes I get my hands slapped. Yes, I, I've yeah. heard that too. So, so uh, what other ways can we show support for this event? Um, just have everybody come up. I think it's important that um, the youth know, because like you said, we still don't teach it in school. I learned about Crispin Gaddis too. That's the only person I knew about, you know, on the educational level inside the public school system. So it had to be home and church and the community that really, you know, push 
um, the educational piece. There's always been a debate about a curriculum of inclusion. It's oh, never yes. really, it's never really uh, gelled the way it no, probably should no, have. No. It's better, but it's clearly not where it should no. be. And the whole Amistad Commission and that all came about about 20 years ago. No, maybe yeah, maybe about 15, 20 years ago. Keep about that. And it, but it still have not been infused into the education of. Of our of our system, not right. only in Elizabeth but throughout. So state I, I, sorry, yeah. I, I wasn't talking about an yeah. Elizabeth thing. I was but, talking about nationally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More of a curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can people get in contact with you or Grace, or if they mm -hmm. want to participate or be at this event? Oh, they can just simply call City Hall nine zero eight eight two zero four one three zero. Ask for Grace. She's always. She keeps the list, let people know if they want to be involved, if they want to set up tables. Sometimes Pepsi came one year, Pepsi co Bottling Company, because it was an, an African-American who made the syrup for Coke. The actual syrup. For Coke, was for made Coke. by an African-American. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed more, you drink <laughs> Pepsi, though. I know. Oh, okay. Coke is there. Coke. They said it takes the paint off. Yes. Takes the paint off. So, yeah, so, so you, you heard that. Pepsi. Yeah, it oh, doesn't okay. take the paint off. We haven't heard that. <laughs> Councilman, I want to thank you for taking <laughs> the time to join us on the show. Mm -hmm. And whether you like Coke or Pepsi, we'll leave that out. Yeah, he'll leave that so, out. So, but I appreciate you taking the time and all mm -hmm. of your leadership, not mm -hmm. only in African American issues, mm -hmm. but for people of our city. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For Councilman at Large, Patricia Perkins Augusti, I'm Chris Bolwage, and we'll see you next week on another edition of Our City.